Hi, my name's Tom Cook, and I'm an emergency physician. I practice in South Carolina with Prisma Health and the University of South Carolina. And this is a video on the RUSH exam. RUSH is an acronym, which stands for Rapid Ultrasound and Shock and Hypotension. And as with most emergency physicians, I see a lot of patients who require resuscitation from a variety of different pathologies. And by just doing a few examinations in sequence with ultrasound, you can rapidly determine not only what the cause of the patient's shock is, but also what the next steps in management are. To start the exam, I'm gonna select the Auto Select application. And what this does is it allows me to examine many different areas of the body without having to go back to my preset selection and choose a different option. And it makes the exam much uh, easier to perform and you can also accomplish it in a shorter period of time. Let's start off by looking at the heart. So let's start with the uh, cardiac exam. We can see this is a parasternal long axis. And in this particular situation, uh, this is a normal exam. The left ventricle has normal function and the right ventricle is not dilated as you might see in massive pulmonary embolism. The second part of the exam is to examine the inferior vena cava. In situations where patients have shock and hypotension, understanding the relative volume status of the patient is critical. And by looking at the inferior vena cava, we can get a good estimate of the patient's volume status. There's two parameters that we wanna look at when we're looking at the inferior vena cava and that's the size of this vessel, as well as its flexibility. Now, if you have a situation where there is an obstructive type of shock or hypotension, such as massive pulmonary embolism or pericardial fusion or tension pneumothorax, we would expect the central venous pressure to be very high and the inferior vena cava would be dilated and stiff. Conversely, if we had a patient who had a low volume status, say from ectopic pregnancy or ruptured aortic aneurysm, we would expect that the inferior vena cava would be flat. After we examine the inferior vena cava, we'll go ahead and move over to the right upper quadrant. And much in the way that we did with the FAST exam, we'd like to look for evidence of free intraperitoneal fluid by looking at that area between the right kidney and the liver and also examining down here by the inferior margin of the liver for the evidence of intraperitoneal free fluid. And the final part of the examination is to look at the lung. We're gonna place our transducer at the midclavicular line between the first and second or second and third rib space. And we're going to see if we can pick up evidence of pleural sliding. This tells us that the patient does not have a pneumothorax at that particular area of the chest cavity. In addition, we're also going to look for evidence of pulmonary edema by looking for the presence of B lines. In this examination, we can obviously see pleural sliding, which is a normal finding, and we don't see any evidence of B lines indicating pulmonary edema. And of course, we're going to do this examination on both the right and left sides of the chest, and once again, we see pleural sliding and no evidence of pulmonary edema. So to summarize, the RUSH exam, we look at the heart, the inferior vena cava, the right upper quadrant, both lung fields, and we can accomplish the, this examination within uh, three to four minutes. It gives us very, very important information about not only the type of shock we're dealing with, but also what our next management decision should be.